Hi, hope you had a good week. This is Hiki with the Lost Samba podcast. This time we're going to speak about um, Samba, Bossa Nova and politics. To do this, we're going to have to time walk back to the 1950s, which incredibly is 70 years ago, and talk about economics and politics. The world was reconstructing after the Second World War and Brazil was doing really well, as I've already explained in the podcast about Bossa Nova. Um, so the artists that appeared in those days, they reflected that moment, they saw themselves as professionals making a living. And this was basically the Bossa Nova. It was very white. It was innovative as jazz was in the states but it was of the upper class for the upper class for this prosperous brazil that was coming up but in the background of this economic growth there was the advents in 1959 of the cuban revolution <laughs> was a very powerful moment, right? Um, obviously, I won't go into history very profoundly here, but um, there had always been the communist threat in Latin America, but this kind of brought it to the fore, right? Uh, uh, and there was the Cold War also, so uh, um, this was a big thing, a big thing in Latin America, and there was a fear that Latin America would become or leftists, you, you, you know, the, it was still in question whether Latin America would be an American domain, North American domain. The youth tuned into left, the left-wing politics. They had already been tuned in, but this grew it. This made it bigger. And um, in Brazil, what happened, there, there was this tension, you know, the left was also growing in Brazil, but de democratically there was no uh, uh, revolution in sight, there, there was no um, communist threat in any way or form. There was a communist party, but that wasn't a threat. But it entered politics, the social questions entered uh, politics. So, to cut a long story short, uh, they elected the president, Janil Quadros, who he made a coalition with a left-wing vice president, very left, not very left-wing, but quite with strong left tendencies. And um, he resigned. At one point there was a crisis, so he thought that by resigning the country would unite with him, but no. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the guy was very weak, and the um, left-wing president uh, 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 took the office. Okay, this is all related in my book, Lost Samba. This is the reason, you, you could say, of this podcast. And uh, with this left-wing uh, president, the United States and the Brazilian uh, rich class of the, the powerful people in Brazil got very nervous. And he started to signal to do proper reforms uh, in education, in, in uh, medical care, uh, social reforms that the country needed. And uh, another thing that also worried the same people was that he was an ally of a very big figure, Leonel Brizola, who was poised to be the next president. So all polls showed that uh, after him, Leonel Brizola would take over, uh, would be elected president. So the right wing got nervous in those days. It was easier. They made the coup. They made the coup and they put generals in power. In the beginning it was light. Um, 
there wasn't a big fuss about it. There, there, there were protests. Uh, the, uh, Zhang was exiled on Elbrizola too, but um, in, in, in general, it was pretty light. But there was an economic crisis. Things began to get worse. And also the students motivated by Fidel Castro and um, all over the world, uh, the, there were protests uh, uh, against the system. And this got very big in Brazil too. And after they, uh, in one of these protests, they killed a student, this really took the streets. Um, and there, there, there were protests, like big protests. There was a famous protest of, of 100,000 in Rio, the biggest protest Brazil had ever seen in Sao Paulo, in, in all major cities. And the generals got nervous, so they, they took a hard line against the, the, the left. They, put uh, very draconian laws against politicians. A lot of people were arrested. Um, on, on the other hand of the left, there, there, there was an armed struggle. There were what you could call terrorists or, or, or freedom fighters, however you want to call them, uh, who um, kidnapped ambassadors and rich people. They kidnapped the American ambassador. Anyway, it was a big mess. And in this political turmoil, uh, musicians were also um, censored, exiled in prisons, and big names such as uh, Chico Buarque, Caetano Veloso, uh, Gilberto Gil, they were put in jail, exiled, um, and it was uh, dangerous times. Now, Chico Buarque, he was a big figure in the leftist universe, if, if you will. Pede perdão pela omissão um tanto forçada mas não He came from a very traditional family uh, uh, really if Brazil had an aristocratic family he would be of, of an aristocratic family and he was a leftist poet very 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 powerful within the Brazilian youth uh, the, the old school the bossa nova guys who were just professionals wanting to make music they uh, stayed João Gilberto Vinicius de Moraes they, they all stayed but um, the 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 youth was all exile so this opened the door for a lot of new artists so the guys I'm going to focus on today are, are like a pair uh, a songwriter and a musician, right? Uh, so these are João Bosco and Aldir Blanc. Now Aldir Blanc is also from Rio de Janeiro, but not the same background of the Bossa Nova people. He was from a more humble part of town, but a very erudite and a studied person, very good writer. Um, and he wrote about the day-to-day -day life of ordinary people, like, of, 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 of the poor, right? And Jean Bosco, he is an extremely talented guitarist. Mm -hmm. What these two did together is something that had never happened before and didn't happen after. They got the actual samba that's done in the favelas and they um, made it special right but it's they were much closer to the samba and to the 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 things that happened in in the lower class than the normal bossa nova and and even the the tropicalia guys even the chico Buarque, because they 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 took that as a template or, or, or as a reference and they took it to a different level i mean all of these people even jean bosco and Aldi Blanc, they came from the middle class uh the the samba and people like that seemed kind of they were patronized, they were seen as almost like folklore. But Jean Bosco and Aldir Blanqui, they, they used the, the, the samba, um, took it to a different level, but they respected it. They, they didn't uh, uh, see it as something beneath them, or, or they, they really uh, uh, worked with that. The song I'm going to play today is typical of this duo. Um, it's about a body that's in the street, uh, which is shocking normally, but despite the body being there covered in a newspaper, 
people just continue with their life normally and uh, it's a proper samba very dramatic very strong words it's not political uh, as you, you know saying we, we need social justice or anything like that but it just shows how the poor people live how their their reality is and um, it gives a different perspective to that and it brings that into the the intellectual class there was a huge uh, market of left-wing uh, uh, um, people ab abandoned by the the their idols who, who were exiled so this music was intended for that public and it's what I'm going to play today <laughs> Tá lá o corpo estendido no chão Em meio em rosto uma foto de um gol Em vez de rezo uma praga de alguém E um silêncio servido de amém O bar mais perto de pressa lotou Malandro junto com trabalhador Fez discurso pra vereador Veio camelo vender anel Bordão, perfume barato A baiana pra fazer pastel E um bom churrasco de gato Quatro horas da manhã Baixou um santo na porta-bandeira E a moçada resolveu parar E então tá lá o corpo estendido no chão em vez de rosto uma foto de um gol Em vez de rezo uma praga de alguém E um silêncio servido de amém Sem pressa foi cada um pro seu lado Pensando numa mulher ou num time Olhei para aquela rua e fechei Camelo vender anel, cordão, perfume barato, a baiana pra fazer pastel e um bom churrasco de gato. Quatro horas da manhã, baixou um santo na porta da bandeira e a moçada resolveu parar. E então tá lá o corpo estendido no chão. This song brings us to a uh back to real, the violence. Um, and this is interesting because when this song was written, the beginning of the 70s, it's when two things were happening. A, Rio had been the capital of Brazil and the capital had been transferred to Brasilia. After that, in the 60s it was still okay, but in the 70s Rio started this slow decline into a secondary state if you will um it went from being like a cultural capital to being something that's far from that nowadays uh, well still there's still a lot of culture in the rio but it's it, it's not what it was uh, um, rio was at one point you you know when it received the the imperial family from portugal the the uh, the emperor of the Brazil, of the Portuguese kingdom lived in Rio. It was a cultural center. It was one of the first places in the world to have telephone. Uh, it, it, it was really a, a marvelous city. But gradually, after the 70s, it started falling down uh, economically and culturally too. And because the police of the time was very involved with the military dictatorship, it was very corrupt, um, and because crime started getting rife, it really started spreading. By the 80s, Rio was pretty much lawless place, right? There were um, a lot of kidnappings of rich people. There were even like uh, what they call like the, the, the blitz kidnapping. They kidnap someone for like $2,000, $3,000 to do a quick transaction. 
uh, there was a gruesome number of one person killed every five minutes um, and it was a very violent place. <laughs> And it all started in the beginning of the 70s when this song about violence was written. Life just carried on with this absurdity of a dead body covered in a newspaper, which was something that I saw several times. I saw with these eyes shootings in, in the street, bodies to counter this, right? Um, there were two remedies. A, one was the uh, evangelical churches that tried to bring the people of the favelas and the poorer people to the churches, saying that this would mend their lives, this would bring goodness and uh, 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 religiosity to, to the masses, and it was good and everything. So there was a big drive towards um, uh, these evangelical churches. Uh, lots of evangelical uh, politicians were, were uh, elected, most of them very, sorry to say, very uh, corrupt. And on the other hand, going parallel to them, militias that the commerce would pay and uh, uh, small businesses would, would pay to keep their businesses safe, to kill uh, 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 dangerous criminals and also there were wars between factions, so this militia has kind of mediated them. Like if someone didn't pay the militia, they'd kill them. If the other side didn't pay the militia, they'll, they'd also kill them. But the, it, it became a very bloody business, the poorest side of huge Janeiro. Lots of crime, a lot of uh, uh, criminality. And from these militias, the main name is, was Jair Bolsonaro, who became the Brazilian president. Um, he was head of one of these militias. He's an ex-captain of the army. Uh, he was dismissed for, for, for insanity, but the military uh, backed his, his uh, uh, presidency. And uh, he, he ended up becoming very popular. His motto was that a good criminal is a dead criminal. Um, and this mentality grew and it became like the uh, 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 way of thinking of the Brazilian far right and they got a lot of support in, in, in this quest of protecting Brazil against criminals or keeping Brazil safe uh, with a strong hand. And on the other hand, the left from the 70s grew very much. Uh, the, the leftist party, the PT, the Workers' Party grew to, to, they had like four presidencies, Lula, who started in the early 70s uh, as a politician. He, he used to be um, a union leader, but he became a politician in the 70s and he was elected three times. And uh, Dilma, who, who also was of the same party, uh, uh, she was a political exile at the time, but this song or this moment is very iconic of Brazil that we have now, you, you know, militias and people who, who, who uh, 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 wanted to protect or, or, or who potentially protected the, the people in poorer areas from violence and the left that grew uh, to being a big expression in Brazilian politics. It's still Lula is wanted to or not, he's still the central figure of Brazilian politics, Jair Bolsonaro, from the militias on the other side. Anyways, this is uh, the end of the, this week's podcast. I hope you enjoyed it. So to, I hope it was uh, instructive. And I hope to see you next week. All the best. Take care. Have a great week.